Jeez, I I entirely lost track of time, and uh, and it is almost time to stream, and I have no idea what I'm going to do, but that's uh that's fine. Uh, if you're seeing this, of course you're watching this on YouTube, which is uh, not the best place to watch it. The best place to watch it would be on my Discord. So if you jump up my Discord, which is full of weebs, as I've said many times then you can actually watch these happen live, which literally nobody does, so I don't even know why I tell people that, uh, that they can do this. Nobody seems to want to, nobody seems interested, but who the fuck cares, you know? This is, um, this is an early startup kind of thing where, um, where things are not running at the, uh, at the level I'd like them to be running, obviously, because uh, stuff takes time. Oh, I forgot to turn on the light. Let me... Click that on. Is that better? That should be better. Yeah, that, that definitely looks better. All right, so let me jump over into Discord and fire up the screen sharing. And we'll go ahead and get started on this because, you know, it's, that's a thing that needs to be done. Where is the, uh, uh, um, there we go. All right, so we got that in place and now I can uh, I can get started figuring out what the fuck I'm going to do here. I mean, I've been working on legs, you know. Well, I haven't been working on anything for the past week. The only thing I've been doing is uh, I've been, um, well, primarily I have been playing Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning and sort of rediscovering that. Let's just sort of, I don't know, rough out something, kind of, sort of. So if we've got like a thigh here, then that thigh somehow needs to, this is the area that I need to work on. It's the, uh, it's the knee and we want to, uh, we want to get the knee. Sort of worked in there and you've got the, uh, the bone would come down here, but obviously we get a little sliver of muscle there. And we get the uh, sliver of muscle there. And for this leg to be in this position, the other leg kind of has to be in a corresponding sort of uh, supporting position over here, where the, uh, the foot would be coming down and Supporting the body in this location. Um, that looks that looks like a comfortable pose, doesn't it? It's the knee that I really need to work on, right in uh, right in this area here. So if we just kind of think of that as. Uh, now the knee typically that's connected via a tendon here and then here's the patella the kneecap which sits over top of that knob that kind of uh, kind of condyle shape of the thigh bone which comes up and the thigh bone has a little socket that comes off to the side like so and so what we're kind of looking at here is Here's the bone, here's this big knob at the end, here's the patella connected with a tendon to the tibia and the fibula, and up here we've got a kind of ball and socket situation that goes into the pelvic area. It fits into a, a little spot called the acetabulum. <sighs> I gotta blow my nose. Okay, and um, and all of this stuff is uh, meaningful and important, but um, it's this space here that I have trouble with the uh, the spot between the thigh and the calf. Um, Let's uh, let's pull up some stuff 
We'll do a quick search. And kind of take a look here. Let's see what we're working with here. Hmm, not finding a lot of good material here. Well, hey, wouldn't you know, there's somebody on DeviantArt who's done something. So here's a Beginner's Guide to Knees by Salacia of Vanadil. It's a pretty cool name. And uh, we'll whack OK on that. And let's see here. Knees been around 90 degrees, have a soft L shape. So it'd be like that kind of thing. Uh, let's draw on the right, uh, on the right layer. Actually, let's um, we'll duplicate the sketch layer, drag that up to the top, uh, delete the contents, and then we'll use that. So we've got uh, leg bent around 90 degrees, soft L shape, and the, uh, the calf here will bulge out a little bit. This is interesting. A tight bend makes the knee large and round, and there's kind of a shape there. I should look up this guy's, uh, should look up the URL for this guy's DeviantArt site. And, um, let me quickly grab the URL of this so I don't lose it. Always give credit when somebody's helping you out. Um, let's see. So there's kind of, there's this sort of dual shape to the knee that I've never really thought about. I don't draw a lot of legs. So you've got kind of the calf that comes down and the thigh that comes down. Then there's the kneecap, and then there's kind of this bottom bit here. So from the side, what we're looking at is kind of... This shape. What the hell is going on here? Ah. One of the most destructive things you can do to, uh, to your progress in anything is to uh, get all indignant and go, I'm not a beginner. If you don't know something and somebody else does, you're a beginner. They're more advanced than you. Learn from them. Don't let your pride get in the way of it. Okay. All right. 
So we've got kind of, when the knee's bent and you're looking at it from this angle, then you get kind of this round bit and a short bit there. You get a box shape. You know, when the knee is bent, it kind of does more like this. So it's like the, um, it's like you have these two cylinders that are placed together and the knee is just kind of bridging that gap there. Sort of like, um, sort of like you have um, a triple hinge instead of a double hinge. So instead of just going straight like that, you've got this other bit. You've got a cylinder here. Oops. And you've got a cylinder here. And then you've got the knee is kind of sitting in the middle of that as kind of an additional little bit. It's kind of a smaller, kind of a smaller cylinder, really. It's not really a cylinder, though. It's more of a, uh, more of a narrow box. Cylinder. Cylinder. And this narrow box kind of floats. So they'd be closer together. Here's the top cylinder and here's the bottom cylinder and here's this kind of narrow box floating on the top and as this turns that kind of stays right there and as this turns we get kind of kind of this situation so when it bends really really tightly and get sort of this and the Thigh bulges over top of the bottom leg. Here I am just doing the standard stuff that I always do, which is just sketch right over top of everything. Let me turn off the lower bottom layer sketch. And uh, let's kind of clarify that more specifically. So when the knee is bent a lot, you've got this sort of bend here and then you've got the knee sitting in front and when the knee is when the knee is bent a little you've got the knee still sitting in front but it's not as so you kind of lock the knee to these central points here and then you wrap skin around that so and there's kind of a so there's kind of an a figure eight shape going on here. That may be a productive way to look at it. It says figure eight, and you could draw a line straight back from the figure eight to the middle of either the calf or the thigh. So you got kind of that shape going on. So yeah, kind of a figure eight. Top bit kind of, so kind of like that. You can see sort of the way that this is shaded here. You can get this sort of that bit right there I have trouble with. So there's kind of a round bit there, and then there's that tendon, and here is the uh, tibia. So that's got a big knob, and the thigh's got a big knob. I think that's really the key, is to understand that the thigh has this big knob at the end, and the tibia also has this big knob at the end, and then the fibula kind of comes down underneath of that. So in between of those, in between those, you get this, um, you get the kneecap, and the kneecap is connected up here to muscle. So you've got muscle down to here, then a kneecap, 
and then you've got a tendon, and you've got big hunky bone and big hunky bone. There's the issue right there. You've got big hunky bone and big hunky bone. And the sides, the sides of those have to, uh, they have to, it, they can't slide past each other. It can't do this kind of thing. So they can't just like it, poke it. So they have to go like this. And the kneecap is anchored to the calf at the bottom. So because it's anchored, it pulls forward, but it's also pulling back because it's connected to the muscle. So you've got muscle coming down here and tendon coming up here. And then in between them, you have that floating kneecap. And that floating kneecap basically... Okay, that's kind of the, that's kind of the thing you're looking at there, which is... Here's your calf, and here's your knee. These are butting up against each other. This tendon is holding the kneecap, and that kneecap is being pulled by this muscle that's stretching down. So it can't move too high up. It can just kind of stretch out there and lay flat, which means... Okay, that's our kind of double thing that's going on there, is this is coming up, and it's only coming up a little bit. So what you're actually seeing up at the top is more this big knot of muscle over top of the condyle there. So this bottom part here, that's the actual kneecap, and this is kind of a bulge of muscle wrapping around the bone at the back. Is that right? Am I thinking about this properly? Let me see if I can find... Let's look at some actual anatomical reference here. Here's a... Um, yeah. When you look at the anatomy here, then uh, on this, you can see that the uh, the kneecap kind of sits right at the top there, and then there's this big bulge up here, which is where the uh, which is where the muscle's pulling down. So that just kind of sits there. It can't stretch very high up. Tendons do not stretch a whole lot. So, uh, where did that come from? That came from Gavat's workshop. I don't know what that is. But, uh... Oh, this guy's got like a whole page on his blog about how to draw knees. Oh, this is really detailed. Oh, cool. That's a pretty good bunch of stuff. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Um, okay, so... I'll drag that down here resize it a bit and okay that and um, drag our sketch copy up over top again so what we've got is kind of and it is sort of sliding over but we've got the um, so we've got a sort of situation where instead of them levering across each other like this the upper thigh bone kind of pulls up and when it reaches the end there it slides across that upper epicondyle there so it starts out like this and as it pulls back when it reaches the limit here this bit slides forward so it kind of does it kind of does this kind of thing instead of 
just levering back across that, it pulls up and that bit slides forward. So you kind of get, um, so you kind of get this situation where as it lifts up, it slides forward and you've got the, uh, you've got the kneecap lying over top of that. So it goes from sort of this situation to this situation with the kneecap lying there and then that big knot of muscle there. So this kind of pivots this pivots around this. So it's kind of, you could think of that as like a round area and this as sort of, you can almost think of this as one solid bunch of stuff. And then in here is the, uh, is the thigh bone. If you just think about how that operates and then when it's bent all the way, as you, uh, when you get to the limit there, when you get to where this can't turn anymore, and this is still continuing to want to turn, that's when this pulls down. So it kind of goes like, uh, it kind of goes like this. Uh, as the knee bends, this slides forward and then this pulls down. So first this slides forward and then this slides forward. Okay. So it kind of ends up going like that. It's kind of in sequence and not um, both at the same time. Okay. So if you think about that and you go, okay, I want to draw a knee in a particular orientation. Um, let's drag the uh, blue composition up here. If you go, okay, I want the leg to be like right here. Here's the leg coming off the pelvis. And I want the leg to be bent like so. Well, in order to bend that leg like that, the interior anatomy is going to be this box here sliding across this box here and then the knee sits right about there and it's being pulled back but mostly we've got muscle being pulled forward so if we duplicate this layer, drag it up over top of composition, uh, turn on the visibility and delete everything on it, if we just go, okay, so here is the contour of this. Here's the thigh muscle. The thigh muscle comes down, and then we've got the knee here. Here's the calf muscle back behind there, and here is the and here is the thigh muscle going back along here. So we've got kind of this situation going on, and then of course the foot would have to be kind of right here. I'm not good at drawing feet. But then we end up with something like that. And if we turn off the composition layer, that actually doesn't look bad. That's significantly better. And we've interlaced the, uh, we've interlaced the knee here to the member that's coming forward. Because that's important. There's an ankle. 
right there. Probably that would be a little higher up, wouldn't it? Okay. Boy, that ankle looks stupid. Am I drawing it too far forward or? Where does the ankle go on this? If we think about it from a composition standpoint, then here's the plantar surface of the foot, and here's the upper surface of the foot, and here's kind of, this is about where the ankle would go right there, so we'll put it there, and then we'll turn off the composition layer, and we'll go, hmm. It's not good, but it's getting somewhere. And really what we're looking more along the lines of is we're looking to do something kind of standing. And we want the leg to be a little more slender. Maybe we want the uh, the legs to be kind of angled together. In fact, we typically want that. We clean up that space in there. So just kind of what we're doing here is um, that's the wrong angle. That needs to be less of a steep angle, and this needs to be curved more inward. These basics here are definitely useful. Um, okay. So if we take this, and we go, all right, let's go ahead and save that, and we're going to do, uh, no, I'm not saving this into my miscellaneous textures. Putting this into uh, Clip Studio, and we're going to do Studio.clip and let's make ourselves a new one and if we go okay so here's kind of we're going to rough in see here's kind of the first leg that the girl is standing on and we have kind of a And then the other leg is kind of to the side. Actually, they're, they both need to be kind of angled inward. Which means our first leg is going to be kind of like this. And then the second is going to come in kind of like this. This is a little exaggerated, but that's okay, and, and there would be the foot right there, and we've got kind of, we've got kind of this situation going on here. And that is a little too far down, so... So this is kind of the shape that we're looking at, but we need to differentiate the two legs a little bit better. 
And those calves are kind of anemic as well. But it's kind of that sort of thing is going on there. We just kind of iconically represent There's kind of a diamond thing that goes on with uh, the shape of the waistline there. That comes up with the sweep of the hips. And then that flares out with the rib cage and the bust line. Huh. Needs to come farther down. That's exactly that's exactly backwards. It's the back of the leg that's supposed to be. Straight, like so. And then the front's straight, and the back kind of comes down like that. So something kind of like that. Let's get the sh foot on there. And of course, you've got this kind of iconic bonga pose where everything is very kind of slanted forward. You kind of do a banana shape to the figure. That's very manga. That's very much a, a manga sort of thing. So you have kind of the shape of the thigh and the shape of the calf, and then you lace them together there with the shape of the knee. In this case, we've got the calf coming forward, so we'd want to interlace the knee in there. And then we've got kind of a plane change going on here. And another plane change going on here. Okay, yeah. So I have kind of an idea of which direction everything is going. That's coming down here. This is coming around here. Similarly, we have a kind of... I'm gonna barrel the strokes there. And just kind of show that the um, the calf is wider and rounder here, and then it gets less round as it goes farther down. This is also a very anime kind of pose.
just this kind of oh i'm i'm so uncertain of what's going on the hand all the way down at the side is just kind of a oh i'm confused but with the hand up here it's kind of a hmm i'm thinking sort of thing just like that's that's a very simple change it's just like if you've got your hand up like this and your other hand is just kind of hanging up by your side that's one thing but if you bring it up and you're like hmm now that's a more thoughtful pose and, and just that one little change in a pose can make a huge difference in uh in how a character reads So that slides along the calf, and then the calf shades into the kneecap there. This would be like somebody sitting in a chair, maybe. Clearly a guy, because he's man-spreading. Give him a nice high calf there. Thing to remember about feet is they kind of come out to the side like this. You've got your big toe, your knee, and your hip are more or less in line with one another. But then the foot goes out to the side. So you've got sort of this situation. It comes in a little bit, but it's triangular and goes out to the side like that. There's where you connect to the hip, right there. Okay, so... All right, so what we're looking at here, let me uh, do another duplicate, delete, clear the previous, and just turn off the previous. Here's a muscle, and here's a muscle, and Here's the patella, the kneecap, this tendon here. Here's the big old hunky epicondyle of the thigh. And up here, over here, we've got the big old epicondyle of the calf, of the tibia. And then there's the fibula coming down here. Because uh, your knee is structured like this so that your foot, your foot can swivel back and forth, but your knee is pretty much locked. It's the same way with your elbow, okay? Your elbow doesn't really twist or turn at all, okay? It just kind of stays right where it is as I block the microphone. But it just kind of stays where it is. It doesn't twist. The wrist twists. It's the same way with your knee. 
the ankle will twist back and forth, but the uh, but the knee itself stays locked in a pretty solid box shape, which is defined by the boxes behind it. I don't think enough about knees. If the knee is going to look like this kind of box, then you're pretty much looking straight on at the leg. Because if you're looking at the side, then you start getting the knee turns on itself. It's like a sort of a, a sort of an elongated box. The elbow kind of looks like this too, and you're and when you're drawing the arm, you've got this kind of box of the elbow going on in there. You got all of this muscle, but up around the muscle you've got this uh, you've got this bone right here. But uh, in the case of the uh, in the case of the elbow, you don't have the um, you don't have the kneecap held on by a tendon. You have an actual projection on the bone. That's kind of fitting in there. So those just kind of lock together like that. Whereas on the leg, you've got this little floating bone there. So that's a major difference. Huh. I don't know that this is a particularly interesting stream. <clears throat> But um, yeah, I'll put uh, I'll put those links in the description, and uh, yeah. Um, okay, uh, I don't think anybody is even bothering to watch, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bail on this, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, get this uploaded to YouTube, and yeah, okay, bye.